Do you see that? Well, obviously not, you're looking at me. But that's Jupiter. And guess what? Nobody knows exactly what it's made of. <gasps> but today, we're gonna fix that, because I'm jumping straight in. Would you like me to pull the information I have on Jupiter's composition? No, not, not now, Rico. Okay, so there are some things we do know about Jupiter. For example, the fact that it has five layers. Rico seems to think I won't make it past the third one, but I'm gonna prove that silly robot wrong. I mean, I have to, because once I get to that last layer, it's gonna make me rich, baby. Space rich. And all the while, I'll be filming some epic, never before seen footage for you guys. Nothing can go wrong. Ow. Okay, we're heading off to Jupiter in a bit. I just have to refuel first. Rico, was there no other moon to make a pit stop? Ganymede is like so freezing out here. It's like a minus 130 degrees. Despite its sub-zero temperatures, Ganymede is an optimal landing choice as it is the only moon in the solar system with its own magnetic field. Fine, well, Jupiter has the answer to my refueling problems forever, so long as I get to its mystery core. It's true that we don't know for sure what Jupiter's core is made of, but we do know that Jupiter is the largest and oldest planet in our solar system. It has more than twice the mass of all the other planets combined. And with a radius of 70,000 kilometers, it's 11 times wider than Earth. This planet is also a gas giant made up of the leftovers from the formation of the Sun four and a half billion years ago. Visiting Jupiter would be nearly impossible because it's almost 800 million kilometers away. That's over 600 times the distance from Earth to the Moon. While we've sent robotic probes to explore its mysteries, sending humans there? That's another story entirely. Right now, the biggest obstacle to reaching far-off worlds like Jupiter isn't just the distance, it's the lack of propulsion systems powerful and efficient enough for such long journeys. Current technology simply can't get us there safely. But what if we could harness cutting-edge nuclear technology to change that? Well, lucky for us, one company called Nano Nuclear Energy is already working on a solution. They're redefining what's possible with micronuclear reactors. These are compact power systems that could transform space exploration. Nanonuclear's reactors like the Zeus Solid Core Battery Reactor and the Odin Low Pressure Coolant Reactor are more than really cool names. They're designed to be portable, efficient, and incredibly powerful. Nanonuclear Space, a subsidiary of Nanonuclear, is exploring how this cutting-edge technology can play a role in humanity's journey to push beyond low Earth orbit. Their reactors could provide energy for spacecraft propulsion and human-sustaining habitats on other planets. These compact reactors can generate between 1 and 20 megawatts of thermal energy, which can be used directly as heat or transformed into electricity. But Nanonuclear's innovation doesn't stop there. Their technology is also revolutionizing things down on Earth. The small size and portability of the Zeus and Odin microreactors make them perfect for remote communities that lack access to the central power grid. Plus, they can be deployed and removed quickly, making them perfect for disaster relief efforts. Nanonuclear is thinking big by going small. They've teamed up with Everstar AI to create an AI-powered compliance solution aimed at making nuclear power safer and more efficient. And with $125 million of cash on hand, they're ready to turn their vision into reality. Clean, portable nuclear energy that can fuel our planet and even take us to the stars. Check out the link in the description to learn more about their journey and imagine how their technology could one day help us reach the big red spot of Jupiter. Until then, we'll just have to send Chase there. Oh, damn, Rico, Jupiter has a massive freaking pimple. 
Let's land there. Warning, the Great Red Spot is a high pressure anticyclone in Jupiter's atmosphere. Winds there reach speeds of 680 kilometers per hour. Of all the places on Jupiter, the Great Red Spot is the last place you want to fly into. It's a storm that's been raging for at least 300 years. It's a lot bigger and a lot scarier than anything you've ever experienced on Earth. I'll just approach it hurricane style and fly right down the center. It'll be fine. This is it. First person to ever fly into Jupiter's big red hole or whatever. Here we go. Warning, temperature rising rapidly. Atmospheric temperature over 1,300 degrees Celsius. Rico, what's going on? System overheating. Cooling system. Rico? Rico, you know I don't like pranks. Stop messing around with me, man. This raging storm is so powerful, it creates sound waves that heat particles in the atmosphere and make this area a thousand degrees hotter than the surrounding atmosphere. So if you land here, you can count on, well, some discomfort. Okay, okay, I can fix this. I can fix this. Um... Oh no, 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 no! Oh gosh, okay. Um, these winds are way too strong. You know, if I close my eyes, it kind of feels like a roller coaster. <laughs> I'm having fun. This is fun for me. <laughs> Jupiter's clouds are mostly ammonia and water. Because the winds on Jupiter are so violent and flow in opposite directions, they shape the clouds into conveyor belts around the gas giant. Some of the clouds reach speeds of up to 500 kilometers per hour. Not that you can avoid them now, as you've already plummeted into the raging planet. Okay, wow, uh, it's so cold that uh, the ammonia is freezing into ice and hitting me in the face. <laughs> cool. Ouch. Uh, Rico, please come back. If you come back, I promise I'll never be mean to you again. Huh? Oh, finally! Rico, you can't just take a siesta in the middle of the day, okay? We're not in Spain. We're in space! Now propel me to the second layer of the atmosphere. Idiot. Propulsion commenced. Oh, what is that smell? Rico, did you fart? Negative. Did I fart? Uh, no one passed gas. At hotter temperatures, the ammonia in the clouds combines with the sulfide compounds to create ammonia hydrosulfide which smells a lot like rotten eggs. Oh, God, it smells really bad in here, Rico. Maybe alien life does exist on Jupiter, except they all died a long time ago. Or maybe, maybe somebody hotboxed Jupiter with a bunch of burning trash. Ugh. No, it's just the ammonia hydrosulfide. Oh, God, this sucks, Rico. Let's go to the next layer, quickly. Depth reading, 200 kilometers below Jupiter's clouds. You are now in the outer interior. Atmospheric contents include hydrogen and helium. Oh, chilling with some pretty standard stuff then. Hydrogen, helium, one cool as hell guy. <laughs> it's just getting a little uh, hot. Pressure reading, 3,039.75 bars. Temperature reading, 1,890 degrees Celsius. <sighs> it's so hot in here. I take the suit off, but then I die, so no thanks. <laughs> Not dying like that again. I don't know how much pressure my camera can take because it's like the air, it's getting all weird and, and liquidy. Uh, this feels very tight in here. Imagine 100,000 cars stacked on top of you from every direction. That's what it feels like as you approach Jupiter's interior. The pressure is so intense that even hydrogen atoms can't withstand it. Under that immense pressure, hydrogen atoms shed their electrons and form a charged, electrically conductive liquid. Think about what that can do to the atoms in a human body. Think about it! Think about it! I'm living it, baby! And it hurts! Ow! 
Rico, quick, Bing, cures for lungs being crushed by unreasonable amounts of pressure on WebMD. No cure available. Oh, okay, search the Facebook comments. Negative. If left untreated, you will experience inevitable death via liquidation. Oh, God. Oh, I'm gonna be sick. Rico, open the space sick valve. There is no spacesuit sick valve in this model. There, what? What kind of crappy suit doesn't have a space sick valve? Ah! Oh, man. I feel really sick to my stummy. Nausea is not a symptom of high pressure. What? Yeah, maybe I should have mentioned earlier that the charged liquid hydrogen paired with Jupiter's rapid rotation creates one heck of a magnetic field. It accelerates charged particles to such high energies that anyone who enters Jupiter's magnetosphere is exposed to toxic radiation immediately. Luckily, Chase's spacesuit is strong enough to delay the facts for, well, for a little while. Ah, oh, great. So it's a race to what'll kill me first? The pressure, the radiation, or those droning voiceovers? Luckily, I've managed to make a few upgrades to my suit along the way, so I should be able to last about another 15 more hours. Rico, let's get going. What if guy, feel free to stay behind. Warning, you are entering uncharted territory. Wow, don't be mad, Rico, just because you thought I'd be dead at this point. I can't see anything. Rico, activate the augmented sensory system. Activating stage one of ASS. And this is why I decided to come here. This is metallic hydrogen. If I collect enough of this stuff, I'll be richer than Jeff Spacos. You can collect enough metallic hydrogen to power your spaceship for two billion light years and repay all your burger debt. Leaving now would provide just enough suit resources to make it out alive. This could be your first successful mission. Yeah, I mean, we could leave, but we're so close to the core. I'd be the first YouTuber ever. Let's just pop in for a quick check. Unintelligent idea detected. <sighs> uh, Rico, so bored. Are we there yet? You've been sinking for four hours. You have eight more to go. Oh God, I'm so bad with time management. Also, you have less than nine hours of suit protection left. Well, I guess this is a good time to tell you guys to go like and subscribe. I'm trying to become the first YouTuber to explore all of space, so, you know, help your boy out. <laughs> if you like and subscribe, we can go do more of these cool videos. Approaching the planet's core. Five minutes of suit protection remaining. Okay, gotta move fast. What do we got down here? Some sort of like crazy alien life or, or super weapon, maybe like a Stargate or, or like some crazy super material. Detecting ice, rock, and metal. Okay, that sounds like stuff you could find on Earth. Uh, maybe I need a second opinion. Jupiter's core was made over four and a half billion years ago during the creation of our solar system. Due to the extreme pressure and temperature, the core is not a kind of hard surface you might walk on. It's pretty liquid-like. 30 seconds of suit protection remaining. Uh, you know what, I don't want to hear any of this negativity, Rico. Just. Get me out of here, okay? Activate the specialized upflow cyclone kit. Suck not available. Suit protection failing. Ah, the suck sucks. Uh, and why is it so hard to breathe and so hot all of a sudden? Your suit protection uh, is now depleted. You are now experiencing a pressure of 43,090,032 bars and a temperature of 29,095 degrees Celsius. The intense conditions are quickly crushing your lungs. You know, you get crushed along with me, Rico. Well, it looks like pressure won out. But don't worry, Chase will be back. Maybe next time he'll be killed by radiation poisoning. But that's a story for another What If.